Hello guys, welcome once more to the GC panel online. In this tutorial, we are looking at June 2022 20, Pure Maths Paper 2, Question 7 and Question 8. So guys, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that immediately we upload any material for the GC to help you, you'll be the first to be notified. Don't, don't just subscribe, but equally click on the notifications bell here so that whenever we upload any content, you will be notified. Thank you so much for always being there and don't forget to share our videos, like them and share on WhatsApp and on Facebook. You can equally follow us on Twitter, Instagram and other platforms. Thank you and stay tuned to the end of this lesson. Question 9, June 20, 2022, Pure Math Mechanics and Pure Math Statistics, Paper 2. We know that you have already subscribed. If you have not subscribed, I am begging you in, in the name of God, please click on the subscription buttons and the subscription bell before you consider this video. Please. If you have never shared our video on Facebook or on WhatsApp, you are not doing good to us. Share so that you help us and help others. Thank you. Now, 9a, resolve the differential equation x plus 2 all squared divided by x plus 3y squared equals 0, given that y equals negative 2 when x equals 0. So, let's tackle this question. First of all, here we will see that we can solve this question by separating variables. So, x plus 2 all squared dy will be equal to negative 3y squared dx. Okay, so we first of all carry this uh, plus 3y squared to the right hand side. It becomes negative 3y squared. We now multiply both sides by dx. So, we have x plus 2 all squared dy should be equal to minus 3y squared dx. Okay. But now we still have these x uh, terms or variable on the left hand side together with dy. So we are going to continue the separation. So we divide both sides by that. So here we are going to have dy on this y squared should be equal to negative 3dx on x plus 2 all squared. So we have separated the variables. We can now introduce our integral sign with dy and dx, which are already there. So the integral of y to the power minus 2, negative 2 dy, should be equal to negative 3 into the integral of dx on x plus 2 squared. Now, for the left-hand side, when we integrate y to the power negative 2, we have negative 1 on y. This should be equal to negative 3 into. Now, for this one, we are going to let u to be equal to x plus 2. And from here, du will be equal to dx. Okay? So this gives negative 3 du on u squared. And that's just going to give um, negative 3 into negative 1 on u. So negative 3 times negative 1 on u just give us 3 over u plus a constant k. So from here, negative 1 on y should be equal to 3 over u, but know that our u is equal to x plus 2. And when we change the variable, okay, from this transformation, the variable, the new uh, constant now be k prime, k to k prime. So that is what we have. We have been told equally that when y is equal to negative 2, x equals 0. So they want us to find the value of this k. That's what they want. So we are going to substitute when x equals 0 and y equals negative 2 into this equation. That will give us... At the point 0, 2, we will have negative 1 or negative 2 should be equal to 3 on 0 plus 2 plus k. From here, our k will be equal to negative 1. Therefore, our final equation will be negative 1 on y is equal to 3 over x plus 2 minus 1, which we can further simplify, okay? You further do that so that you have in the form y is equal to that. Though they have not mentioned the equation, but it might be good to do that. Okay, now there is B part of the question says we should solve the, we should sketch this curve. 
I hope our dear viewers out here have subscribed to this channel because if you have not subscribed, you are missing out a lot as we're moving up to paper three. Most of our paper threes are hidden, paper twos, and some elements. Sometimes we have made some of the videos such a way that you are not subscribed, you cannot see them. If you really want us to be making more videos, guys, to patronize us, well, you can start by you share our content on Facebook and uh, different WhatsApp groups where we have students and so on. Share as much as you can. Equally, leave your comments, like um, our, our stuff, our videos, and so on. If you want to do a financial donation or you want to support us financially, you can send us money through PayPal using our email or you can use the telephone number that is found at the website to support us or you can contact us directly from here and you tell us how you like to support us please we really need the support because we are spending time for connection and all of that and you know how the country is we have to spend a lot of money for wi-fi during the week to make sure we are connected and all of that so your support will go a long way to really help us you can get back uh, GC equations from our website www.gcmathpanel.blogspot.com and equally you if you are in need of a tutor that should see you through the gce please and you have the money please it's not a joking matter if you don't have the money please don't come and disturb us and then we can assign somebody for you note our tutors work online but if you are in yaoundé we can see what how we can do the arrangement any arrangement that is done with our instructors the transport is borne by you thank you let's look at the b part of the equation Have you even subscribed? Did you even share? Well, we are going to find out. So, question 9b reads, you are given the curve or the function of the curve, y is equal to x plus 2 on x minus 1. Sketch this curve showing clearly the points where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. These ones are called the intercepts and the behavior of the curve as it approaches its asymptotes. So, they want us to get the limits and draw up the variation table and that's it okay so from here we start by saying let y be equal to f of x equals that so from that uh, we have f of x to be equal to that the first thing about sketching a function is to look for the domain what's the domain of the function the set of all values of x for which the function makes sense okay so now let's with this function th this function will be defined this function will be defined for all values of x excluding 1. How? Now, look at the denominator here. If x is equal to 1, you have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now, the numerator divided by 0 will make the function to be undefined because the value is infinity. So the domain of this function is set of all real numbers excluding 1. And it's always good to write the domain in interval notation like I've written like this, okay? So this is the domain from negative infinity to 1 from below and then we consider one from below positive infinity okay or can use a set of all real numbers excluding one now the next point after domain is limits now for this curve you can get the limits at positive and negative infinity at the same time you can combine so as x tends to infinity a very large or number or a very small number we see that to a very large number like let's say 10 billion plus 2 it's like you have not added anything to 10 billion it just be 10 billion right so when it becomes a very large number at infinity we just consider the variable with the highest degree. So it's just going to be x divided by x, as you already know from class. So the limit will be equal to 1. Even as it tends to negative infinity, it's also 1. So we have combined two limits here at positive and negative infinity because the values are the same. You can only combine two limits like this if the values are the same at positive and negative infinity, okay? Now, the next one, the limit as x tends to 1 from below. 1 minus means 1 from below. You can write 1 less than. So 1 from below, we can take a number slightly less than 1, for example, 0. So we say we test here. We have 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 1. That's going to give us negative 2. Now, from a domain of definition, when x is equal to 1, we have a vertical asymptote. And the limit of a curve at the vertical asymptote is always infinity. So what are we doing here as x tends to 1 from below? We only need to know the sign because we know the answer is going to be infinity. Because limit at a vertical asymptote, please don't misquote me, a vertical asymptote is infinity. Why? Because a function is not defined at 
the value of a vertical asymptote like here x is not defined when the function is not defined when x equals one so we say the line x equals one is a vertical asymptote that's the equation of the vertical asymptote and the limit there will be infinity now we are taking a limit before that vertical asymptote or after we already know the limit is infinity but we just now need to know the sign is it positive infinity or negative infinity so that's what we are testing here so before that vertical asymptote that uh, vertical line we are taking the limit as x tends one from below that's from the left side of it we take a number slightly less than zero slightly always take a number slightly like zero point uh, uh, zero point nine will also be good because it's not up to one you test it here whatever value you have if it is positive it means that you have positive infinity as a limit if it's negative it means your limit is negative infinity that's why we have negative infinity here we now take the limit as x tends to one from above one plus or one greater than take a number slightly less than uh, one also normally i'll take 1.1 i'm just taking this video because this does not affect the results okay whenever you have something that logarithm or exponential function avoid to use a number that is far away always use like 1.1 all this number just a slight difference of 0 0.1 because logarithmic functions like that they are terrible especially for those who are doing further math and those who are doing functions in technical schools so be very careful about that sometimes a limit is saying a different thing but a curve shows a different thing and then you are confused because of those type of limits i think i've explained them in some of our videos too so now here as x tends to one from above you can take a number slightly greater than one we take two two plus two over two minus one the result is positive so our limit is positive infinity because we took that limit at a value of an asymptote so we have passed the domain the limits the next thing now should be intercepts the equation says that the points where the curve crosses the coordinate axis right those are the intercepts so we intercepts uh intercepts okay before intercepts let's always talk uh, about asymptotes we get we can see the vertical asymptote from the domain that value that is excluded from the domain is a vertical asymptote but the vertical asymptote is always written as an equation so the vertical asymptote here is a line x equals one because one is excluded in the domain if more than one number was excluded then we'll have more than one vertical asymptote or multiple vertical asymptotes we see the horizontal asymptote in the limits so you can see here the limit is equal to one if all the limits are giving us infinity then we know that there is the existence of an oblique or slant asymptote the one of the limits says give us a numerical value the numerical value of a limit gives us the equation of the horizontal asymptote y equals one note vertical asymptote is always x equals something horizontal y equals something okay in that i'm talking about the function in the case where the function is f of x equals that if something like f of x y equals x instead then you can say otherwise so we have two asymptotes here vertical asymptote x equals one and horizontal asymptote y equals one if they ask for the center of symmetry just say the point one one where the first one is the vertical the second is the horizontal okay that's what we call the point of symmetry okay now the next thing the center oh, sorry the center of symmetry okay now the next thing now the intercepts for the intercepts we are going to consider when if x equals to zero because whenever a curve is crossing a line either x equals to zero or y equals zero so in our case when x equals zero and substitute zero here we're going to have y to be negative two so the point zero negative two is an intercept and if y equals zero we will have x to be negative two so equal the, the point negative two zero is, is an intercept so we have two intercepts okay so this first one is the intercept on the uh, y axis and this one is the intercept on the x axis this one this first one is the x intercept <coughs> and the second is the y intercept make sure you subscribe and share this video thank you after intercepts you can now go to the variation of the function and we start by looking at the gradient function dy dx or y prime so this is a rational function or a fraction so what you are going to apply here is the quotient rule okay because it's a quotient bottom constant differentiate top minus top constant differentiate bottom all that on bottom squared so we keep the bottom constant x minus one this is it we now differentiate the top differentiate the top you are going to have one this is the one here now minus the top constant so minus x plus two you must put a bracket because this is a sum or a difference when you have an expression like this always put a bracket so minus the top constant differentiate the bottom you're going to have one all that on the bottom squared x minus one squared put brackets also 
So this will, when you simplify, you will have negative 3 on x minus 1 squared. And this result will always be less than 0. Why? Because the numerator is always negative, the denominator is always positive. So the result is, is always less than 0. So when you have this type of result, what can you say? You say the function is strictly decreasing. So the, looking at the monotonicity of the function, it is strictly decreasing. Okay? If it was greater than 0, you say it's strictly increasing. Sometimes with some functions, some, at some points, it's increasing, some points it's decreasing. You can watch most of our tutorials on functions and curve sketching, okay, from the same, the same channel. So here, y is strictly decreasing. <clears throat> and here, there is no variable in the numerator. When there is no variable in the numerator, you say there is no turning point, because you don't have anything to equate to zero and so forth. So there is no turning point. Since there is no turning point, we just move directly to our variation table. So on our variation table, we first of all have x, we write the domain out, negative infinity to positive infinity, excluding 1, this is it. And since this is a vertical asymptote, we are going to put a solid heavy line here, vertical line, to show this is a vertical asymptote, okay? Whenever it's a vertical asymptote, we put this line. Now, we already know from the gradient function that the curve is always decreasing. So, the f prime of x will always be negative here and negative here. So, when it's decreasing, it means the arrow is going down from top, uh, top left to bottom right. So, it's decreasing. Okay. So, it decreases from, neg from 1 to negative infinity. How do I get this one here? This one, as x tends negative infinity, what was the limit? It's 1. This is it here, right? As x tends negative infinity, y was 1. So this is it. As x tends negative infinity, y is 1. And as x tends to 1 from below, this is that limit again. 1 from below is negative infinity. This is it here. So from here, they can ask you from the variation table to write out the limit. And as x tends to 1 from above, you had positive infinity. This is it. And as x tends to positive infinity, the same this limit. y tends to 1. So this thing is decreasing from... 1 to negative infinity and from positive infinity to negative to 1. Positive infinity in this section is always up and negative infinity is always down. Something can never decrease to negative infinity because negative infinity is the lowest point. And something can never increase above positive infinity. Or something can never increase from positive infinity. So that's why positive infinity is always up here. You can now sketch the curve, okay? These are our x, x, y or Cartesian plane. We put our asymptotes. This is our horizontal asymptote, the line y equals 1, and this is our vertical asymptote, the line y uh, x equals 1, 2. And then this is our curve. From this variation table, from this uh, horizontal uh, asymptote, this is going down to negative infinity, this is it, so it passes at this point. Then, equally, it comes down here, it crosses uh, two intercepts here and passes, it comes very close to this other uh, vertical asymptote here. Okay? And then for the y, you can see that uh, on this other side too, you can see from the variation table, this positive infinity, one from above, it starts at positive infinity, this is it, and comes down to one. It does not touch this asymptote. So it comes down. So these are the points that we have plotted out, and then now we link with our curves, okay? So this, these are the intercepts that we solved and had here. So this is how they do the curve sketching. We have so many videos on curve sketching that focus on curve sketching. You can just look at rational functions on our web. Just go to just go to um, Google and type GCE Math Panel. And then you continue by saying rational functions. Whenever I want to search any of our things, type GCE Math Panel or GCE Panel, and then you type what you are looking for. GCE Panel Pure Math 2022. GCE Panel that. So you always type that to search our materials. Thank you, and we hope you have subscribed as we move to the next question and the last question. Ciao. Did they subscribe? Some will never subscribe. GC Panel.